my name is Bob Stolick and I am going to tell you about the construction of a catapult glider today. The catapult glider we're going to use is called the Scout. It's a kit produced by Stan Budenbaum. This entire DVD will be funded by a grant from the National Free Flight Society Foundation, compliments of Bill Vanderbeek. My job today is to show you how to build this model and then uh, later on we'll show you how to trim it for good flights and for getting maxes. The Scout is an excellent beginner's event catapult glider, easy to build, uh, and, and uh, a wonderful flyer. So let's get started. When you receive the Scout kit, you'll notice that it comes with the wing, which is in three parts. One, two, three. It has a stabilizer. Uh, it has a fin. It has a fuselage, which is marked top, and it has a weight attached to the fuselage. And there are some additional parts that come wrapped up in a piece of tape. Stan produces these kits by hand at his um, place of business, and each one of them is custom made but special. Uh, it, the plans need to be ordered separately. You can see them here and uh, you need a set of plans in order to build this model correctly. <clears throat> when you get the plans and the kit, you'll notice that the wing is pretty much formed all the way. It has uh, the trailing edge sanded almost down to a sixteenth of an inch and the trailing edge, or the leading edge of the wing um, squared off. The only thing that needs to be trimmed down is the tip and each tip uh, can be sanded in order to make it flow better and, and uh, be better airfoiled. So we're going to do a little bit of sanding on the tips and then we're going to round the leading edge of the two wing tips and of the main panel before we glue them together. And all I'm going to do on the leading edge is slightly round it so that it's uh, equally rounded on the bottom as it is on the top. Same with the other tip. So the main panel leading edge gets rounded over so it has a nice round leading edge. Same on the bottom. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to uh, taper these tips so they're a little thinner. We're going to try to make them about 1 16th of an inch up to the high point which is about here and then we'll taper them into the leading edge which will be a little bit thicker over here. A little bit of finish work with the uh, uh, lighter weight sanding block and round off the, both the leading edge tips and you're pretty much finished with the two tips. At some point you probably should compare the two tips to see that they're, you've sanded them off somewhat equally. This one looks like it has a little bit of work to do on it, so we'll continue. And that's about it. We've got the two wing tips and the main panel. The leading edges have been rounded on all of those, and the next step is to glue these parts together. The uh, next step on the wing is to uh, glue in the tip dihedral. And the plan calls for two and one sixteenth inch uh, tip dihedral. So I've cut two pieces of balsa wood each of which is 2 and 1 16th inches high. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pin the main panel to the sheet using some model pins and then I'm going to use some Sigbond cement. Well, this is actually an aliphatic resin. The aliphatic resin is very similar to what you can buy in the carpet tree stores like uh, uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. So the kit as you get it already has a beveled edge to it. We are going to apply some glue to this edge. Uh, I like to rub it along the side here so that it's make sure all of the glue gets in the right spot. I hold it up with one hand like this, put a pin in with the other, like this, 
and then I'll put the the dihedral block underneath in this fashion. So that's all there's to it for this side of the wing. Now, if you feel like you might end up knocking this off, you can actually pin through it in that fashion. It's going to stay there. Do the same thing for the other wing tip. This, uh, this allophatic resin takes about an hour to, to set up correctly. Um, Stan also suggests, and I think it's as good an idea as this, to use a different type of glue. It's a, a cyanoacrylate, um, sold quite often as jet, and he uses the thick version. There's a thin and a thick. Um, but I like to use uh, SIG, um, SIG Bond. It takes longer to set up, but it's non-toxic and you just glue it and let it set and you're fine. The next step is the assembly of the fuselage. First thing to do is to cut off the weight, which he has just simply ta taped in place, because you're going to apply this later at some point. But at this point in time, you don't need that weight there. Uh, the fuselage is marked top, and it's very important that this be the top, because the bottom of the fuselage is tapered, which gives it the amount of angle that it needs in order to fly. So we're going to measure this off. You'll see that the nose of the model is four inches long, so we'll mark that space as four inches. And then there's a three inch wing, three inch wide, or the wing has a three inch cord. We'll mark that. So this is where the wing goes, right over where it says top. And then the distance uh, at the end, at the back, is a, there's a one inch gap at the, at the back side of the stabilizer. And that one inch gap, one inch at the back, is, is your hand grip for when you uh, move this, get ready to fly this model. What we're going to do now is we're going to taper the fuselage slightly so that it's not as thick at the back as it is right behind the wing. So we're going to use the thick sanding block, the big sanding block, and we're going to taper this back in this fashion. Just rub the sander on this a little bit more at the back than you do at the front part. Don't go beyond the mark which is the back of the wing. Sand it down about um, that far, about this many strokes, and do the same thing on the opposite side. The object is to get the thickness of this tail down from about one eighth of an inch, which it is when you get it from the kit, to probably a little bit less than 330 seconds. The next thing you need to do is you need to uh, round off the nose a little bit. I use the X-Acto knife to cut it slightly. This is an attempt to uh, provide a little bit of streamlining, probably isn't needed. For me, it's uh, a matter of it, that it looks better. I then sand it rounded a little bit so that it's not blunt or as blunt. Probably good enough for now. We'll get back to it later. Uh, next step is to um, glue on the stabilizer. Now the stabilizer, stabilizer, excuse me, the stabilizer glo glues on underneath, and you'll notice that the stabilizer itself um, is just a sheet of one sixteenth inch balsa wood. Before you glue it on. I suggest you round the leading edge just like you did on the wing. There's no need to put in an airfoil, it's just simply to get rid of the squareness of that cut. You can, you can sand off the tips a little bit more to make them thinner. And you can sand the trailing edge a little bit more to make it a little thinner. But by and large, the stabilizer doesn't have to have much of an airfoil on a model of this type. 
Well, the next thing is, uh, is, is important, and that is to find out where the center of the stabilizer is. And to do that, I'll measure it and I'll find that the stabilizer uh, span on this is five and a quarter inches. So that means two and five eighths inches marks the uh, center line. There's two and five eighths. I'll mark it. Actually, I should mark it on the bottom because that's how I'm going to glue it on. So we'll do that again. We'll try to make a straight line uh, on it. That looks like, actually it doesn't, it looks about right. We're going to glue this, remember we're going to glue it on the bottom. And what I like to do is I like to use some other ty types of glue for this purpose. The reason is, on quite often on, on catapult gliders, you need to adjust the stabilizer incidence, that is the amount of uh, attack it has when it's flying. And quite often they're either uh, too, uh, there's too much incidence, in which case the model will not climb. And in some cases they're too little incidence, in which case the model in fact could even dive. We're going to make the stabilizer, we're going to glue it in place. We're going to try to make it so that it's fairly easy to adjust. In order to do that, I'm going to use a cement that I use called Duco. Uh, it, any type of acetate-based cement will work with that. If you have uh, anything by like Sigment or uh, cements of that type, use that. I've used Duco for years and I like it. Um, so I've got my Duco cement. comes in a green tube. That's what it looks like. I'm going to put a little bit of duco on the bottom of this stabilizer mount, fuselage mount. And now I'm going to put the stabilizer in place right over the glue. I'll leave an inch. I'll make sure I've got it on the bottom, not on the top. I've done that before. I didn't want to do it for this article. Pin it in place. This glue takes a few minutes to dry. Uh, the reason to use Duco is that when you're out on the field, Duco cement holds pretty well, but it can be broken easily if, you're, if you work on it a little bit. And by breaking it, you can put a shim, like a piece of 164th plywood, or maybe even the thickness of a business card, uh, slip of paper from a business card. You can put it underneath the trailing edge to give it less incidence, which means that it will not loop in the climb. Or to give it a little bit more incidence, you add that shim under the leading edge. It's easier to break duco cement than it is, say, uh, SIG bond, type bond, or any of those kinds of glues, and particularly much easier than, than a cyanoacrylate. So while this is drying, we want to make sure we've got it pretty even. We don't want any stab tilt in the stabilizer, so we'll even it up with the fuselage, it appears to be pretty even. We can always reset it later if we find out that we do have uh, some of that uh, tilt in there. So we'll just set this aside and let it dry for a few minutes. Uh, the next step after the fin, after the stabilizer has uh, dried and is on there pretty solid is to glue on the fin. The fin, if you look at the plans carefully, you'll notice the fin does not glue on the very top but instead glues on the side of the fuselage. And it also has a very small incidence wedge glued on the side of it. There's a piece of 132nd balsa wood and it's there to give it glide turn. So when you launch the model, this helps establish the glide. And for this task, I'm going to use uh, Zap Instant CYA or cyanoacrylate uh, glue. So we mount this stabilizer, this fin right above the stabilizer, just like it shows. Try to get it in place and with vertical, and just drop a couple drops of glue along the side. 
to hold it in place. Get some right on that, that little block. Hold it for an instant and it's dry. That's, that takes care of the tail assembly for this model. And once the wing is ready to mount, we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, what I want to show you now that we have the stabilizer and the fin glued in place, I want to show you that I try to round off the edges on the fuselage. So from the stabilizer forward, all of this area can be rounded off. The purposes of that are to reduce weight and to streamline the fuselage, which we think probably helps reduce drag. So in doing so, I just very gently sand this whole area underneath the, on the bottom end of the fuselage, all the way from the leading edge of the stabilizer to the nose of the model. Now you can do the same thing if you remember where the, if you mark where the leading edge of the wing goes, you can do the top of the fuselage as well, as long as you don't go past the mark where, which designates the location of the wing, because that has to be as square as you can get it. So this top area is sanded off like that, it's kind of made round. So what you have is a tapered, rounded tail boom. And this part of the model is ready. We're still waiting for the wing to dry, and when it's done, we'll glue it on the top after doing a little finish sanding. After an hour or so, the wing uh, dihedral joint should have dried, and you can do some finish sanding on it. What I like to do is I like to feel the joint where the tips and the main panel meet. Usually there's a little ridge there. I use the lightweight sandpaper, sand that ridge down so that it's smooth. Um, do the same thing on the opposite side. Sometimes the the wings don't the wing panels don't line up exactly. This one is slightly off, so I'll sand that down to make it even on the trailing edge. If it's on the leading edge, which it isn't in this case, we do the same thing. This side seems to be better. The next thing is to sand down the trailing edge so it's about 1 16th or a little bit less uh, all the way across. In this case it's a little bit too much. I'm going to use a fine sander and I'm going to sand this trailing edge down a little bit more just so I get a better airfoil shape out of it. And I check the leading edge to see that it's about the same roundness all the way out seems to be. If it isn't, you can adjust that a little bit by just doing some fine, final sanding. Once you're satisfied that the wing is um, even all the way around, that you've sanded the trailing edge down until it's about 1 20th of an inch or thereabouts, the leading edge is rounded where it's supposed to be, the next step is to find the center part of the wing. So you use a ruler, measure, in this case it's exactly 6 inches, the so we mark the 3 inch mark, same with the leading edge, mark the 3 inch mark. I always use a felt pen for this purpose. So there we have, this is the exact center of the wing. Now we're going to glue this onto the top of the fuselage between the two marks that we made earlier. And in order to do that we would simply line up the two marks we just made on the wing so that they're centered in the fuselage. And to do this I'm going to use um, thick cyanoacrylate cement or glue um, because that way I can hold the wing in place and, and, it, and it'll dry in about 30 seconds and that way I won't have to use the tight bond. Uh, this uh, is called uh, Zappa Gap glue and it's um, a gap filling formula takes about 30 seconds to dry, a little bit longer to be fully cured. I just drop a bead on the fuselage right between the two marks, slide the wing in place, center it, and hold it with my with my fingers like this. 
Now in about 15 seconds this will be hard enough that I can line it up because at the present time I don't know whether it's got stab tilt or what. When I look at the airplane, the wing and the tail should be even. The horizontal tail and the center section of the wing should be on the same plane as the rest, as each other. Now I prefer to uh, cover or finish my models with um, typical model airplane dope. This is um, thinned out nitrate dope um, and I uh, get it, it it's a, a SIG product. They sell it um, online or in the stores and I thin it out about 50 percent so it's um, much thinner. I know that other people use other materials to cover their models with to finish them off with but I prefer the old old-fashioned uh, dope. Typically what I'll do is I'll put three coats of dope on the wing, uh, two coats on the fuselage, and the, and the tail assembly. And then I'll uh, finish up by putting my numbers on it and a, an address. So I'm going to start by just uh, doping a wing tip. And um, I'll work my way down this other wing into the center. So we'll set this aside and let it dry and I'll come back and finish the rest of the rest of the wing in a minute. Okay, so one of the things that needs to happen with, uh, with the catapult glider is you need a catapult hook. The catapult hook for this model, for the Scout, is a piece of 1 32nd plywood which is provided in the kit. And we hold it in place, as you'll see on the plans, right under the leading edge of the wing in this fashion. And I'm going to once again use uh, thick CYA. To do the to do the, the adhesive work. Ideally, I would have put this on before I put on my first coat of dope, but in fact, I forgot. So after you've uh, completed your first coat of dope on all the surfaces, take a really um, worn-out piece of 600 letter dry paper, something that always doesn't have a, a sandpaper feel to it at all, and very gently go over the entire model. Because what happens is when you put on your first coat of dope, it raises the, um, the wood a little bit and it, it makes it really rough. And you want, you want the wood surface to be smooth for the purposes of flying. So a very light sanding on the entire wing, on the fuselage, and on the stabilizer is important. Usually, you may not, you shouldn't have to sand after the second coat, but it's a good chance to, to take a look at it, see maybe if you need a second coat, a second sanding on that after that second coat of dope. So the one thing that I didn't mention um, uh, last time was that there is a, a little incidence wedge that's glued on the inside of the wing on the left tip just under here and so uh, it's now glued in place and that helps keep the wing uh, up when it's gliding so it won't spiral in. It's a nice little addition to this model. Uh, it also will fly without that but it might not fly, it might not glide quite as well. So I have put on uh, now two coats of dope over the complete model including the wing. I've sanded it after the first coat and there's still a little bit of fuzziness so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use that same piece of old worn out wet or dry sandpaper I'm going to go over the complete wing and um, sand it down, get the fuzziness out of it. I'll do the same thing with the stabilizer and with the fin. One of the things I like to do on my gliders is to uh, paint them with a color that makes them visible in the air as well as on the ground. So what I've done for this uh, project is I, I've obtained two spray cans of paint. Um, both of these are available from um, from hobby shops or from stores that sell craft supplies. This is called Design Master Flat Black. It's for the underside of the wing and this is uh, a Pactra brand fluorescent orange uh, car paint. Um, the black is very good to have on the bottom of the model because when it's in the air um, it appears as a dark shadow and the orange is good to have on the top part of the wing because in the grass it stands out. Um, so I'm going to mask 
the uh, airplane uh, so that I don't paint everything that, that I don't want to paint. And I'll do that by using masking tape and some uh, just regular bond paper. Whenever you spray paint, you need to do that outside. And so I didn't show how that's done on the video, but uh, needless to say, the painting took place out of doors. So all you need to do now is pull off the masking, and there you have the wings with the black underneath. Um, I'm going to do something similar for the top, and I'm going to paint the tips orange. So now I have spray painted the tips. Time to take the masking off, leaving this uh, type of arrangement for you. I didn't get it quite even. I'm not sure that's important. Uh, the important thing is that when it's in the grass, one of the tips or the other will be up in the air and you can see it uh, bright orange. I did forget to put the balance point on the model, so I'm going to do that now. It's one and three-eighths inch from the leading edge of the wing. So I'm going to put a little mark right there where that spot is. And I'm going to see where the airplane balances. Well, as expected, it's way tail heavy. And that's the reason Stan, in his wisdom, sends along some lead weight. So I've got this piece of lead that came with the airplane, and I'm going to mount it to the, air, to the model. Now I know that uh, this lead is going to be way too much. So I'm going to, I'm going to, take, uh, I'm going to take some of it off and um, only glue on a part on one side. It's important that the airplane be balanced where it shows on the plan because if it's balanced too far back, it will stall in the glide, and if it's balanced way too far forward, it will, it will um, dive. And we don't want either of those to happen. So here we go. I've got a little bit of lead on it, and it's still tail heavy. So we're going to put the other piece of lead on the opposite side. And it may be too much, in which case we'll use an X-Acto knife and cut off some of the lead. I put a pin in the um, balance point. I'm going to hang the model upside down like this and see how it balances. I've trimmed just a little bit of the lead off using the X-Acto knife. And it seems to balance just about perfectly. So at this point, uh, we're ready to do some test flying. I wanted to uh, tell you how I finished up the glider. Uh, with a little feature that I like to use, and that is I've added some uh, wet or dry sandpaper, this happens to be 320 grit, on the tail because when you, when you pull back on the launcher to launch it, this gives you a little bit of additional grip, and, and that's something that I like, otherwise you're going to lose your grip on the model. Also, when, when Stan, when I got the kit, uh, kit from Stan, he sent along a uh, launcher. Basically, the launcher for a catapult drop glider is uh, just a stick. It's got a slot cut in the top of it, and it's got a, a uh, rubber uh, loop, one quarter inch rubber loop on it, which you use then when you go to launch the glider in this fashion. 